All right, so uh, today, uh, the first thing I want to show is uh, some interesting information uh, regarding uh, social media in general. Uh, so go ahead and open up your web browser. And let's go to, let's go to the address money.msn.com. Now, I want to touch on an interesting topic regarding social media slash finance. So most of us probably have some savings account, checking account. Some of us probably have maybe investments or a 401k or an IRA or something, some monetary um, uh, savings vehicles and such or investing vehicles. So. Um, this is one of the many websites out there related to finance, related to investing. Uh, I like checking this uh, site out um, almost every day just to keep up to date with the economy and interesting news about uh, technology and companies and such. And there's also news here regarding social media. So money.msn.com. Uh, um, the the thing that I want to point out is many of the social networks that we talk about in this class are actually part of companies that you can invest in. You can uh, purchase stocks in a variety of these companies. And I'm not a financial guru or anything like that, so don't ask my advice. Uh, but I. Uh, myself, of course, try to educate myself in, in the topics of money and finance and all of that. You know, one day I, I hope to retire. And, um, you know, studies show that a lot of people are not quite prepared for retirement. Uh, Social Security and such is often not enough to, uh, to make it in retirement. So savings and investments and such usually help. Again, I'm not a financial guru. I just am trying to educate myself while I have the time. So I bring this site to you for a few reasons to kind of educate yourself on finance. But I want to focus on the finance of social networks. Uh, there's a little box here right below the main headline that says, quote, search. If you go there and uh, type Twitter, if you search for Twitter in the quote box, there should be a listing right here, TWTR, Twitter on the New York Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. You can click on that. This will give you the latest financial information about Twitter. So again, the topic of the stock market, it's a big complicated thing. Uh, it's where uh, anyone can buy uh, a piece of a company, a stock or a share of a company is that you have invested, you have bought a piece of a company. And therefore, you share in its profits if they do well, and you share in its losses if they don't do well. So throughout you know, the 21st century, in the year 2000, we've seen the ups and downs of the economy, like the dot-com bust, if you remember in the late 90s, early 2000s. A lot of tech companies lost a lot of money. And then the economy did really well, and then there was the big crash again of 2008, 2009. A lot of people lost money. But through it all, um, it's been on an upward trend uh, before I show this on Twitter. Actually, let me show something really quick here. Um, in general, the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is one of many ways to track the health of the US economy, um, this is what the, the stock market looked like in the last year, in that it was going up and up and up, and we're all rich, and it's going up and up, and then a huge crash and then up and down, and who knows what else will happen. But looking at it in also the longer term, five years, here's the previous presidency, the current presidency, going up, going up, big correction. But starting from five years ago, it's definitely higher. And then looking at it in the whole history of the US economy, all the way back up to 1920, um, this little bump right here, that's the, that's the great stock market crash of 1929. 
that's the Great Depression there that devastated the U.S. economy and the global economy. Way back there, that little speed bump. And then all of here through the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, there it is, the, the turn of the century, the 21st century, the dot-com crash. And then back up again. And then the financial crisis of 08, 09, big crash. And then up, and then up, and then up, and then another crash, perhaps. So this is the big picture of the stock market in terms of, well, if you had invested your money at the height of, you know, 1928, then you, you lost it all the next year. Okay, well then, you went up here, whatever year this is, this is probably that 1987 crash. So you invested all your money at the height of 1987, and there was that crash, you lost everything. Then, well, maybe I invested when this dot-com stuff is really taking off, the internet, everyone's talking about it, let me invest in 1998. Then it crashed, and it was up and down. So, not to dissuade you, I keep talking about crashes, and that one was a big one, but, in the long term, even in a slice of time, that's up. That's up. Okay, yeah, from here to here, that's not so good. But then from here to here, it's really good. From here to here, that's amazing. But who knows what's gonna happen in the next few weeks and months and all of that. So, if you're interested in this, this website has a lot of this information, keeping up to date with finance and stuff. And just for your information also, uh, I really like this site, investor.gov. They've got a lot of information about investing in the stock market and social security and all that good stuff. Because um, I teach classes here at North City, and usually people that come in uh, have already been established in life. You know, you've, you've got families and jobs and everything, uh, maybe even close to or at retirement. And on the flip side, I also teach at Southwestern College. And most of the classes and students that I teach there are in their 20s. So I see both sides of the coin in that this is important for everyone to learn about investing, the economy, stock market, all of that. So um, I show this site and uh, the MSN money site. Uh, because the, thing, the, the trick about any of this is that it's time. The more time you have, the more time you have to invest. Because even if there's that huge crash, that was already 30 years ago. And that's been corrected. And then the one from 10 years ago was, was there, and then that's been corrected. And who knows what we're heading for, but if you've got the time, the stock market is a great thing to know about, to invest in, and, and uh, for your financial security. So what I was about to say was, if we look at Twitter, Twitter is one of these new media companies that um, they are worth billions of dollars. And you compare it with, like, let's say, like Johnson & Johnson or Walmart. You can invest in Walmart. You can invest in Johnson & Johnson. And if that company, those companies do well, your investment does well. If those companies do bad, your investment does bad. But those companies like Walmart and uh, Johnson & Johnson and Disney and such, perhaps they have more tangible <coughs> products. They have tangible things. <clears throat> Uh, that they sell or what they're about. Twitter, it's all virtual, it's all digital, there's no product, there's no real thing, it's just tweets or it's websites and such. But this is a company that's worth billions of dollars. Um, and looking at the financial data for the moment, um, the opening value of the Twitter stock was here this morning, and something happened, good news for Twitter, the, the value's up. Now, something happened at the very beginning of the day that the price of the value of the stock went up very high and very low. But then other stuff happened and it goes up and down and so forth. So this like, looks like a wild ride. And yes, if you look at the economy and the stock market and, and various companies in a one-day time period, it could look like a wild ride. If you look at it in a week, well, at the start of the week, the value of, of the Twitter stock was right there at $32.79, and now a week later it's at $35. So from 32 to 35 doesn't seem like a lot of money, but if you're invested in several shares of a company, that compounds and it's a lot of money that you get in return on your investment. In a month, same thing, a month ago Twitter stock was $26. A month later it's $35, that's a $10 increase pretty much. 
if you had invested, you know, 10 shares, if you had, you know, $260, 10 shares, if you bought 10 shares of Twitter, let's say 27, if you spent $270 to buy 10 shares of Twitter a month ago, uh, those, each of those shares would have appreciated $10. 10 times 10, that's another 100. You'd have gotten $100 in one month just by investing in Twitter. Whereas if you had $260 in the bank, you would have gotten like probably two cents on your investment because banks don't pay you back any money on interest anymore. I remember back when I, um, when I started uh, teaching back in 2007, um, my, or actually a little earlier in 2005, my bank was giving me 5% interest by saving in, in the bank, you know, Pacific Trust. And every month, 5% interest on that. Great, my money was slowly growing. Then the economy crashed, uh, banks got spooked, and now they give like 0.1% interest. That's less than 1%. So if you've got your money only in a bank, you're actually losing money because inflation is always in is always um, on the table and your money there in the bank is not growing 0.1% it's it's not growing because inflation is often like 2% so again I'm not a financial guru I'm just throwing out a lot of ideas but investing in Twitter a month ago would have been profitable well great and I'm gonna invest in Twitter right now well hold on if you look at things in a year um, yeah, a year ago, Twitter stock was $15. If I invested in Twitter uh, a year ago, if I had those same $200, I could have bought many more shares of Twitter. And then a year later, those shares would have appreciated a lot. That's amazing. Okay, I'm going to go invest in Twitter. Okay, hold on. If you look at it in five years. If you had invested in Twitter when Twitter first became public, when you were able to buy stock in Twitter, which was back in 2013, Twitter stock was worth $41 a share. Um, five years later, even though we've had this upswing, it's at $35. You would have lost money in those five years or so. And poor you if you had invested when the, when the big frenzy of buying Twitter stock was happening. At one point, it was $69 per share. So wait, I'm going to buy Twitter. It's going to keep going up. I'm going to be rich. You bought Twitter when it was $69, and then it crashed all the way down to single digits, like $9 a share. But now it's coming back up, maybe. On a personal note, I did buy Twitter when it was at around like 40 something dollars. So my investment has lost money, but I'm still holding on to that Twitter stock just in case it comes back for fun. Any stock splits? What's that? that could cause those prices to fluctuate. Twitter has not had any stock splits. Apple has and Google has, but Twitter they have not. If they do a two for one, the price automatically drops it. Ah, yes. It so Definitely. There's other things to kind of consider when you're looking at it. There's normal market corrections about every 10 years. Yeah. There's big drops. Yeah. Really are garbage. It's just funds <laughs> in the 80s. Yes. Yeah. The uh, times in the 90s. And then the subprime mortgage. Yeah. The market is going to correct for those isolated incidents. Yeah. I've been a CPA for a very long time, so I know a little bit about this stuff. Definitely. So, yeah, it's a big, complicated topic. Uh, just looking at some quick numbers like this, it doesn't paint the full picture, but you're right about that. So, then just kind of looking at it in terms, that's why I have. Let's look at these interesting websites. Yes. Isn't it like very expensive, like the share price for Twitter at the moment? Because if you look at their balance sheet or their net income, they have so you know I see like all red figures. They they don't make any profit. So. Yeah, that's the thing about the modern Web 2.0 companies. About like they, first of all, they don't make a real product, and uh, they. Yeah, but they should make profits. Yeah. They are you know if I look at their what is it how they are. You know, their credit situation, they mm -hmm. have like a lot of debt. Yeah. You know, this is all very negative. So I believe it can come down a lot. Yeah, and uh, you never know. If you look at the fundamentals and then you do the analysis, maybe it's not a good investment at all, even at these prices. But maybe if you've got a little bit of mad money, yeah, I've got $500, I'll put $500 in Twitter and maybe something will happen. I'll put it on Facebook. <laughs> I'm about to get to Facebook in a moment. Right? You're not getting dividends on no. this. No. So you're basically speculating on the price change. Yes. It's like options. Yes. So, so I guess we all should invest in Facebook. 
Let, let me let me get to Facebook right now. Yes, I'm showing first the uh, the the the, um, the loser in this. Let me show the winner in this. If you uh, search instead uh, the quote right there, Facebook, there is the ability to buy Facebook. It's publicly traded, and again, if we look at it in a short term of let's say uh, one day, well, here's what Facebook is doing. Stock price last uh, uh, opening stock price was here, and then it jumped up. Various economic or factors, uh, for some reasons, um, and then of course below all of these, you're going to see articles about perhaps analysis of why the stock prices in are going well or bad or whatever. But again, if you look at it in much longer term, because yeah, the stock market does correct itself. That huge crash that in the in the 1929 that, that caused the global turmoil, the Great Depression, you saw the little speed bump there. Uh, you know, 80 years ago, whatever that was, and um, that was corrected eventually. And then the crash of the 90s and the crash of 09 and all that, those have been corrected. And the next crash that's coming will be corrected. So it's a long-term thing. A week, a month, yes? Uh, by law, people who have 401k, they have to invest maturity age 70 to have. 10,000 millennials a day are doing that, and some have up to $500,000 in their 401k. So the U.S. economy, by law, is going to be destroyed in a matter of months. Um, think about that? That's, uh, <laughs> that's a strong possibility. There's a lot of factors. And yes, if uh, we, uh, this is the thing that a lot, this is why I bring this up, because I also talk about it in, uh, at the other college, where it's a lot of younger people, and, and they don't know like any of this stuff because we don't teach this anymore or ever I don't know if we ever taught it about basic savings and checking accounts and IRAs and 401ks and such so um, I try to educate them even though this is not the topic often of their classes I still at least bring it up and show them go educate yourself right here investor.gov look at these um, articles and such and maybe some of the smart ones will figure it out and save the economy so should we put these in our LinkedIn uh, pages as a post? Uh, well, uh, when I cover LinkedIn in just a bit, uh, that might be an idea. If it makes sense to um, talk about this stuff in your post, uh, in your profile, sure. So um, here's Facebook in a year. Again, a year ago, Facebook was $139. Uh, today, it's $185. Okay, well, that... that uh, Again, it's a, it's a bigger topic, but simply investing in a share of a stock, you're, you're waiting for it to appreciate because the mantra is buy low, sell high. Super simplified, of course. But if you're buying a stock and when it eventually is worth more, you sell it, but then you have capital gains, etc. It's a big topic again, simplified. Well, oftentimes, um, you know, to do investing right, you often want to invest in companies with dividends and all of that. And none of these companies are paying dividends at the moment. Uh, but just um, looking at it also in five years, you know, five years ago, Facebook stock was $26. When they went, uh, when they were IPO, initial public offering, yeah, you could buy uh, Facebook stock like $25 if you got in before it, you know, with the hardcore investors, it was even cheaper. But let's say you bought on day one with the regular people, $26 a share. And that was back in 2013. So five years later, it's at 180 whatever. And so uh, just those shares are worth that much more. So then you'd want to sell. Maybe, I don't know, probably, maybe not. It's a big topic again. But this is a company that has done very well because they've seemed to figure out how to exploit that's the extreme way to say it, of course, but they've figured out how to exploit online commerce and ads, and they've got such a huge uh, audience. We said previously two billion members. Well, they figured out how to put those ads. When we talked about ads about Facebook, they figured out how to uh, make money off of that themselves and keep their investors happy and keep the buyers happy, because if it wasn't working, if me spending those $5 didn't get me any results, they would change their strategy because they Facebook needs to keep their investors happy. So love them or hate them, and I've made my position on Facebook clear before, they are a very profitable company, 
and uh, could be valuable to invest in. And I'm not giving any investing advice at all, of course. I'm just saying, here's the numbers. You have to do your own research. You, you can go off and read the analysis. Oh, look, Facebook dropped for a second. Did you see that? It got red for a moment. Uh, so you, you would read all of this to educate yourself. The new kid on the block, which we'll talk about eventually, Snapchat. Let's look at Snapstock. S-N-A-P. Go check out Snap. That's the one that all the millennials love. That's the one that they spend all their time on because Facebook is so passe. That's the one. I don't want to be on Facebook. My parents are on Facebook. I'm going to go to Snap. Well, Snap has built a cache of, of a... Um, has built a cache of young people. And that's the coveted demographic, the, I don't know, the 18 to 25 demographic, 18 to 35, whatever it is. That's the demographic that all the companies want to market to and sell to because they've got so much disposable income that they don't really have and debt. And so, um, great, snap, it's only $17 a share. I'm going to invest right now because it's going to keep getting better and better. Well, if you look at it again in the last year, now let me go back to all. This doesn't look that good if you look at it in all time. And it's only been a year that Snap has been publicly traded. But a year ago, uh, it was at 22.53 a share. And then it's been cratering. And then, OK, we hit the bottom. We've got the upswing coming up. So then uh, it's up, but it's out. It's up, it's down. And maybe it's up again, $17. So this is the one. All these other ones you might get some good return out of it. Honestly, I think on Snapchat, no. Don't bother with Snapchat at all. They're, they are, they've built their, their empire on a house of sand. Wrong metaphor, but they've built their house on a plot of sand. Um, th if their original goal was to have you know youngsters, millennials, etc., they're actively doing things now to try to get the older people into it too older, whatever they define it as, which is then causing the, the younger demographic to revolt. I don't like Snapchat anymore. They're changing it too much. Why are they trying to get my parents on Snapchat? Well, they need to get more people into Snapchat to be profitable, to sell ads, etc., to increase their stock price, to keep their investors happy. But it's... Um, Do you think it's a buyout possibility? Facebook already has it. They've got Instagram, which copies already a lot of what Snapchat does. I, I think if I think if they did a buyout, it would be a it would be an insulting offer, because they could. So I, I don't think anyone is going to want to buy out Snapchat really that seriously. But you never know. MySpace was bought by Justin Timberlake a few years ago, so you never know. It could be some sort of niche thing eventually. It's too early to tell. So um, there used to be LinkedIn. I don't think it's going to list it here anymore. We'd have to look at historical data. LinkedIn was also a, um, a, a company you could buy stock in. And at one point, I think LinkedIn uh, was probably like at $300 a share. Uh, very high, actually higher than, than um, Facebook ever has been. Uh, and those companies haven't had splits. But yeah, uh, LinkedIn was, was at hundreds. Uh, per share and then Microsoft bought them Microsoft Microsoft paid like something like a hundred billion dollars or something that might be too high but they Facebook paid a lot uh, uh, Microsoft paid a lot of money to buy LinkedIn so they're not separately listed anymore they're part of Microsoft now so you can sort of say the parent company then of of LinkedIn is Microsoft taking a quick look at Microsoft it's at $96 um, they had a stock split or so throughout the years, and um, they're climbing up again. And they do pay dividends. So again, no financial advice, but I invested in, in uh, Microsoft, and I'm very happy about that. Now, obviously, I didn't invest in Microsoft in the 80s, then I'd be even happier. But um, in those last five years, Microsoft has been, you know, five years ago, the stock was $28.00. And today it's ninety six dollars, and then if you look at it in all time, back from their opening in nineteen eighty six, it was ten cents. Now that's adjusted for splits and all of that. But Microsoft also had this where um, the dot com bust. Look at that stock price there, relative 
because of splits, a huge crash, and it took a while for them to recover, and it was like the darkest depths right there in 09. Uh, new CEOs and such, and now it's been up. So, <coughs> Pinterest is the one that um, people have been wanting to invest in. There's no Pinterest public stock at the moment. It's only private. And back in maybe one and a half years ago, yeah, it must have been one and a half years ago, there was a lot of frenzy about new companies coming out, Twitter and um, some other ones. Um, you can buy stock in Twitter, you can buy stock in this and that, and that caused a lot of uh, greed in Wall Street and it wasn't founded, it wasn't, it wasn't worth it. So Pinterest, they, it looked like they were going to go public a year ago or so, but they've pulled back and they say, well, maybe we'll kind of be private for a little while and make sure our business model is sound and then be uh, publicly traded. So there's no Pinterest to buy at the moment. But just, you know, again, I wouldn't stake my retirement on these companies. I'm going to buy ETFs and I'm going to buy dividend producing uh, funds and I'm going to invest in, you know, municipal bonds and such, which are um, safer, quote unquote. I, I would not put my, my retirement money into these companies um, unless they're diversified and unless you know what you're doing and all that stuff. Unless, you know, you have, you've talked with uh, financial people. I think I heard that there's a, there's a CPA in the classroom, so, you know, you could ask for advice and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, the new hot thing, Bitcoin and... Yeah. Yeah, $20,000 20, $20, per Bitcoin last month, and now it's back up to eleven or so, but then it went all the way back down to 7000 So that's, that's pure speculation and greed right there. Who knows if cyber currency will really, or cryptocurrency will really take off. Um, but it's fascinating to, to know about. And um, this site and many other sites out there, <coughs> one more, then we'll get to LinkedIn, uh, just for your notes, uh, investorjunkie.com. Just a bunch of other articles there <coughs> over on the Learn tab, investorjunkie.com. That one's organized under news and a variety of topics regarding life stages or what is Bitcoin, a guide to not lose your money. And, um, you know, plenty of these investment sites out there, and I, and I like to show these kinds of sites. Most, most of us, you know, unfortunately a lot of us, and studies show a lot of us just can never hold on to our money. We, we are always, uh, many are living paycheck to paycheck or uh, bad financial uh, decision and, and, uh, and advice and such. I just uh, read an article yesterday that some guy at some firm um, has been uh, barred from in, um, being an, uh, an investing advisor because he abused his elderly client to the tune of losing them like $725,000. That person had dementia and then this person, uh, this in investing professional, professional uh, did all of these transactions that caused lots of losses and commissions for himself and now the investigation has concluded his guilt and you know there's those bad actors of course and it's a big topic, and uh, it's not black and white, but uh, the more we know about these and educate ourselves, the safer we are. So, any questions on this financial stuff? Yeah. Bitcoin is this new cyber currency that is a digital way to uh, buy and sell things with money that doesn't exist based on a mathematical calculation and it's big and complex that's why there's an article here about what is it and basically they're saying well is it actually a currency or is it a commodity a commodity like corn is it a thing that you own and trade or is it a thing that you use like money so basically uh, you know 10 years ago or whatever when this was first invented uh, you could use your computer to do calculations to create money 
but money is only as valuable as the other entities deem it valuable. So 10 years ago, Bitcoin was worth like 10 cents. Well, this last year, Bitcoin, one Bitcoin, you know, 10 years ago, one Bitcoin was worth 10 cents. Last year, one Bitcoin was worth like $20,000, but then it crashed down to like 7,000, only 7,000, and now it's coming back up again, whatever it is at the moment. But it's the hot thing that everyone's talking about in investing, and for the regular people, don't even look at Bitcoin. Don't even bother with that. It's pure speculation, and, and the people that have the money to mess with this, they know what they're doing. Um, I remember reading an article when you know this Bitcoin stuff was like just a blip on the radar. Someone had like you know a hundred bitcoins um, on their computer. Then they upgraded to a new computer and recycled that old computer. They never took their bitcoins off of that computer and put it onto the new computer. And when the prices went up, he had thrown away a million dollars on virtual money that doesn't exist at all. <laughs> <laughs> this this kind of comes off U.S. companies with foreign operations do not pay U.S. tax unless they repatriate the money. Repatriation being deemed repatriated if they have control. So, so U.S. corporations with foreign operations for years had what was called an international credit card. Mm. IRS finally said that's control. If the U.S. corporations <laughs> use that international credit card or any key member, then its control is repatriated. Hmm. So I, I think this was an attempt to end around that, and it just hmm. it, it caught on with the speculative guys and, and the insiders. I'm sure made a ton of money, hmm. um, but it never really caught on as the means to make payments in any meaningful way. Because again, IRS and, and our governments around the world are going to step in and say this is control. Regulation. And that combined with the last tax act, dropping those corporate rates in the U.S. Hmm. That's interesting, yeah. That, that's an interesting angle. So it's very complicated, and that's why it's interesting. <laughs> All right, so uh, just that was for your information. I'm going to put this in the notes just if you want these also, and then we'll move into LinkedIn for the day. Uh, so just um, in the notes, um, info on. Um, stocks and such. You can go over to money.msn. You can go to investor.gov. Go to investorjunkie.com. Uh-oh, Microsoft dropped. Did you see that? It was red for a moment. So, um, let me save this.